Clay Matthews, the uh, Packers linebacker, showing off his running skills yesterday. How would you uh, how would you rate your running skills after the interception yesterday? I thought they were outstanding. <laughs> in fact, last year I had an interception in Chicago and, and went out of bounds because I wanted Aaron to get his fantasy points up. <laughs> but this year I made an oath that I would try and house it. And if my teammates were more interested in blocking than they were at catching a lateral from me, I probably would have got six points and been the hero of the game. But instead, it looked like I was, I was a bull in the china shop. Name some names. Who wanted it? Who wanted the pitch? Well, uh, you know, Casey Hayward. It looked like he was trying to take it from me to, you know, to get his stats up. But, um, you know, we had a private discussion. I told him he needs to block for me in the future. Did you play offense in high school? Yeah, I was uh, my senior year. I lobbied to play tight end. I caught five passes. Uh, I had six thrown to me. Unfortunately, that sixth pass was in the CIF Division Four semifinal game against St. Bonaventure in Southern California. I dropped it, and unfortunately, we lost the game. But thanks for you know conjuring up past. So you cost your team the championship. Well, I mean, it could have been the forty-two fourteen drubbing we took, <laughs> but I, I didn't help. Well, it could have been forty-two to twenty-one had you scored that touchdown. So it was like a six-yard route. I wasn't a real a burner route. in high school, still a not, but I'm sure hands. Who's the fastest guy on the team? Hmm. I, you know, I'd probably say Sam Shields. He's he's pretty fast. Who's the slowest? Hmm. Maybe like Josh Hitton or something. One of the one of these guards. If you and Rogers raced forty-yard dash. Come on. Are you kidding me? Rogers, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he is pretty spry out there. I'll give him that. Okay, okay. so if, if I did a 100-yard dash, does Rogers have a better chance of beating you in a 40 or a 100? Probably in a 100. Yeah. At around 60 is when I, <laughs> I need my inhaler. It's when you start to tap out? Yeah, you know, you know me. I'm, I'm a big tap out guy. Just, I need my puffer, head to the sideline, get somebody else in there for me. When you, when you face the, the Bears, we're used to seeing the Bears be competitive. Um, and I, I was reading the tweets after the game by some of these guys, including Matt Forte. Like, they, were, they felt good about the effort in a loss. Did, should that be weird? Because they're, they're facing you guys, they feel good that they, they kept it close? Well, I'm sure they don't feel good about a loss, but at the same time, you know, they have to be kind of excited about what they're able to do. I mean, obviously, I'm not going to sit here and lobby for – what they were able to do against us, but at the same time, I mean, it was a, it was a tough, tough game, and it came down into that last couple minutes in the fourth quarter. I know Forte had some success against us. Uh, you know, Cutler, for the most part, you know, aside from that last interception, uh, had a real smart game, and, I mean, they, they played exactly, you know, the, the type of offense and defense that John Fox is accustomed to. So, uh, yeah, I mean, you, you know, you can't, you can't dwell on, on a loss. I mean, it's, it's simply the first game of the season, but... You know, just in general, there, there's always stuff to improve upon, whether that be a win or loss. And fortunately for us, it's a win. But, you know, we have just as much work to, to do as well. What's the scouting report on Cutler? <laughs> um, well, you just you got, you got to stop the run, which we need a, you know, a little more help at uh, yesterday. And then you got to force him to beat you. But, you know, he made, he made some good plays out there. And fortunately, we were able to make one at the end to, uh, you know, to kind of Put the game away. Did you really give me the game plan right there? On the yeah, well, I mean, listen, we play him again. I can't be sitting here <laughs> talking about this is what he does. You know, we see him Thanksgiving night. Big night. Brett Favre gets retired, too. So, you know, we got to make sure we, we put on a show. Did you ever sack Favre? No. I, yes, I did, as a matter of fact. Um, I came close in 2000, did he, 2009, I believe it was. Had a few hits on him. 2010. I'm not real happy about it. He slid behind the line of scrimmage. And I was the first one to tap him. So I, I sacked him. Yeah. Add him to the list of quarterbacks. That's not really a sack. That's a tap. Hey, listen, at the end of the day, oh, no. I got a stat that says sack <laughs> Brett Favre. Do you know how many sacks you have in your career? Yeah. How many? I got 60. Well, in a regular season, I got 61. You know how many interceptions? I have no idea. Four or five? Six. Along the line. Six. Nice. Two touchdowns. Yeah. Uh, tackles, we, we've had this debate here. Are, what do you think of these, these statistic tackles? Listen, they're skewed, all right? You've got to think of somebody who, who's been playing outside linebacker you know, for his six years prior to this year. I mean, you simply set the edge. You're chasing plays away. So tackles are, are you know, tough to come by. You're lucky if you get 
three, four tackles a game in hopes that one of them is a sack. But that inside linebacker, maybe the safety position, that's where you can end up with 10-plus tackles a game. But, you know, I'm, I'm under the um, impression that teams do their own tackles as well. So you could have a player who finishes with 150 tackles at the end of the season, but they're done by, you know, so-and-so's team. So I don't believe that's a league stat. So they could be a little skewed in favor of, uh, you know, some of these guys who get crazy tackles each game. Well, some guys in the NBA will say that home statistician would, would pad the stats for rebounds or assists. So it- oh, yeah. I was, well, let me give you a little story. I was on the sideline with, uh, you know, Peppers yesterday, and he had what was believed to be two sacks. Now, B.J. Raji was on the half, and I said, listen, you are not well-liked in Chicago. You are not getting that half sack. And lo and behold, at the end of the game, he finished with one and a half sacks because they're not going to give it to him. That's the home statistician right there. Wow. Yeah. Wow. You know, this needs to be statistician gate right here. Or something. <laughs> no, no, no. No more gates. Oh, sorry, <laughs> no, sorry. no more gates. All right. You're Although, right. Did you, how much did you guys talk about what was going on with Spygate or Deflategate? Do you care about that? No. I, you know, honestly, we didn't, we didn't care about that one bit. Nothing. Nothing in the locker room where you were saying, what, what happened to Brady? Brady got off? Okay, when you heard Brady was not going to be suspended, the reaction in the locker room was what? Mm. Uh, there wasn't much of a reaction, to be honest with you. It was more like, oh, you know, either good for him or, oh, all right, that's what's up. That, that's about it, though. Do you care if the commissioner is judge and jury? Hey, Listen, I called in here to have a fun, you know, <laughs> happy-go-lucky type of conversation that I'm used to. Now you're hitting me with these, you know, these questions where you're putting me on the oath right now. You're putting me in front of, uh, what's that guy's name who ran the inv- investigation? Ted Wells? Yeah, you're putting me in front of him right now, and it's a little biased. It's a little skewed. Wow. You want to talk about your hair? All right. Well, I mean, we're seven years in. I thought you had some new material. Well, how about those? How about those glasses you were wearing last night? Yeah. I turned on Sunday Night Football. You look like you visited Southern California. And you got a little, you know, a little hipster. Vibe Hell yeah! Here. Hell yeah! I, what were those? Gucci, Prada? Uh, I don't know. I think they were Randy Jackson from American Idol. He, <laughs> he has a line of uh, glasses out there. So nice. yeah, I was trying to go a little bit more bookwormish. You look good, though. I mean, you know, hey, you know, what? another thing too. I'm, I'm going to be the interviewer here. What uh, happened at ESPN? You know. I hear all this talk about you coming back with Scott Van Pelt, and then you're talking about, no, I'm not back, and you need to give me a billion dollars, and I get to fire some people. <laughs> what really happened? Well, wait a minute. How many questions you got there? It's one giant question. Okay, I, I am not going back to ESPN. I did Scott Van Pelt a favor. He asked me if I'd come in, and I uh-huh. did that. And I left eight years ago, and for the most part, got along with everybody, 99% of the people there. And uh, just decided that that was it. I was done. I was sort of the Brett Favre of uh, ESPN. Yeah, and, and, you know, we all know how it turned out for Favre. And look at you. You're now a movie star. Yep. I mean, you're in plenty of movies. You have great roles, your own show now. I mean, things are just, you're really on the up right now. Thank you, and I, I appreciate that. Of course, my pleasure. So, was there anything else you want to know? Any any other questions I can answer for you? No, that's that's about it. We can get back to the uh, inter- the interview at hand. Yeah. Uh, what what size shoulder pads do you wear? You know what? Who, who who's that guy who works for your show? Who was clowning me on Twitter the other day? <laughs> Wait, Paulie, were you clowning Clay Matthews? I was. Why? Well, he was having a little. He was having a little bro fest with Forte on on, on social media, talking about my JV pads. Well, they look like those old Sears shoulder pads <laughs> that you get, you know, for the kids. And so for, I asked uh, Forte what he thought of them. He goes, "Yeah, they're 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 tiny." Yeah, they're real tiny. Well, listen, you got to understand when you're pass rushing, when you're trying to fit through those big, <laughs> you know, those big offensive linemen, you got to squeeze through those gaps. You can't have those big, you know, pads on looking like the water boy out there. You got to be <laughs> sleek. Now I know it's not a, uh, you know, not what you want, but I mean, who cares what you want, Why right? Why are you defensive? I, I'm, I'm just I'm telling you how it is, all right? I love my little kicker. Sh- you know, I, Mason Crosby, the kicker, is right next to me, and sometimes I'll just switch pads with him. <laughs> I might dislocate a shoulder here and there, but you know what? Screw it. Paulie, you have a question for Clay Matthews? What if, what if they had a rule that you had to have shoulder pads of a certain size? Uh, Would that be a silly rule? All right. Yeah, that'd be kind of silly. I mean, provided they, uh, you know, they protect you, then then so be it. But I mean, we have we've got silly rules like you got to wear your thigh and knee pads. I mean, that's not really going to protect you from anything. If you, if I said you didn't have to wear the uh, th- uh, thigh pads or your knee pads, would you wear I, any? No, I wouldn't. In fact, I didn't my first couple of years when they when they didn't have that rule. 
Yeah, that's always weird. I mean, how dangerous is that, though, when guys coming at you with their helmets and shoulder pads and hitting you, hitting you low there? Well, listen, I, I think the public perception is that, you know, we need to protect the players, and by putting in thigh knee pads, it appears as so. But the bottom line is if you're going to take a helmet in your knee or, you know, your thigh, you're going to get injured, whether that be anything from a bruise to, you know, something more major. But, uh, you know, I think if you look around the league, players like to be, uh, you know, as, as fast and, and wearing as minimal, you know, clothes or whatever you want to call it as possible. So, but, I mean, it is part of the deal now, and, you know, I'm sure it's helped me out on occasions. I have a stat for you. Now that, that you have uh, – th- there are four active guys with 60 sacks, at least 60 sacks, and at least two interception touchdowns. Any idea who the other three are? Um, You'll get one. Julius Peppers. Yes. Terrell Suggs? Yes. DeMarcus Ware? No. Mm. This one's tough. Um, this one this one got me. Man, I'm... Kevin I'm, Williams. Really? Yeah. <laughs> wow. You wouldn't expect that from Kevin, oh. Kevin Williams. Big man with two picks. Yeah, two picks. Good for him. Uh, if you have to run down Russell Wilson... Okay. <laughs> Yeah. What's what's the question? That's it. If Forty yard run, dash. Forty yard dash. You and Russell Wilson. Like right now, is he escaping the pocket, or is he just is it like a straight up forty yard dash about, NFL well, combine? Well, will he run faster? He'll run faster if you're chasing him. But let's say it's just straight up forty yard combine. Well, what did he run at the combine? Did he get invited to the combine? I, you know. Uh, well, you don't. Can have, we pull that up? Can we get your statistician to pull that up? I think he ran a four five or just under a four five. Okay, I was I, I was uh, I was four five electronic. I was four six, but I'm you know I'm a big math guy, so I take great angles. So <laughs> I mean, straight ahead he might have me, but if, if I'm at the right angle, I like I like to put my bet on geometry. Okay, I got him at four five five. So Ooh, man, okay. that's Different pretty. Speed. That's pretty good. But I, you know, I need you to. I'm going to toot my own horn here. I had the <laughs> second fastest ten yard split at the 2009 NFL Combine behind one. Percy Harvin, he had a one four eight. I had a one four nine. As a uh, you know, as a pass rusher, I think that's that's real important. So I'm just gonna toot toot right there. Okay, but why do do you want to catch a pass from Rodgers? Yeah, I'd love to catch a pass. But, but have you talked about this just to say, come on, let me go JJ Watt on these guys? Listen, they 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 attempted that with uh, I don't know if you remember with Peppers last year against uh, New Orleans. He ran a nice little slant. And that ball just came in hot, hit him right in the chest, went to the ground. And I think all our hopes for, you know, putting us on goal line tight end just went. You know. Yeah, but if you're that quick off the line of scrimmage, I, I can use you down at the goal line and, and I, you're going you're gonna to get open. You know, I'm going to patch you through to uh, Do you want me Michael to talk to McCarthy, McCarthy right now. Yeah, just patch you through to him. I got a show. To, uh, you know what? But I'll follow up with him when I'm done with the show, though. Great. Now, did, I need this. Did you see J.J. Watt sack, get the sack yesterday and his helmet came off? Yeah, I, I saw it on uh, – I, I saw some highlights. Was yeah, it, it a chance that he did that on purpose, that the helmet came off? Oh, there's no doubt about it. He, unbuckled, <laughs> he, knew, he knew it was third and long. He unbuckled both straps knowing full well his helmet would fall off so he could get that NBA face time. And nice. then he did you know, the salute and everything. And, 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 that's, and he got what he wanted. Good for him. Damn. You're not bitter, though, right? No, I'm not bitter. I'm just thinking I need to do that next time. <laughs> next time, I might just take my helmet off before the play, and everyone's like, wow, what a badass. Well, I feel bad for J.J. He just uh, doesn't get enough publicity, Clay. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, man, it's, it, it's hard when you're training out in the woods, you know? You need, to, you need that social media. Oh, man. Uh, good to I, talk enjoy, to I enjoyed Hard Knocks. I enjoyed Hard Knocks. Would you want to do it? I think it'd be fun. I think, yeah, but, you know, the Packers wouldn't do that. We, uh, I don't think we'd let the cameras in here. Really? Who? Yeah. We like, a real cult kind of, like, following up here in Green Bay. And so, you know, we just want the cameras out of here. When you go to the supermarket, what happens? I usually go around 12, 15 a.m. on, a, <laughs> like, a Monday night tonight, you know, with a day off tomorrow. Yeah. And I'm able to get in and out in 10 to 15 minutes. I know exactly what I want when I go down the aisles. And for the most part, at that time, you get you get left alone. But uh, but now they know you're going tonight at twelve fifteen. Well, I might mix it up and go at you know eleven fifteen. No, don't earlier. say when you're going. Oh. All right.
Right. Uh, congrats with uh, another pick on Cutler, who you own, and you got the game plan, and you think he's overrated. And uh, against Seattle coming up uh, next Sunday night on NBC. Big game, big game. All right, yeah, I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. All right, thank you, bro. That's uh, Clay Matthews.